Take it away. All right, so I chose to do my project on neonatal isourethrolysis in foals. So it maybe at first glance doesn't seem like it is an environment for the foal, but technically the maternal environment is something that can affect the foal in utero. So that's kind of what my thinking was on that. So for the disease background, it is this disease is typically found in foals, either horse or mule foals, but it can also be found in newborn kittens, but for this, the purposes of this project, I focused on the foal. So the definition of neonatal isourethrolysis is the destruction of newborn red blood cells by maternal antibodies ingested through colostrum. It can also be known as hemolytic icterus or hemolytic anemia because those are both symptoms that are caused by the disease, uh, icterus and anemia. Um, it, the reason it develops is because a mare and stallion, if they have different blood types and the foal happens to inherit the sire's blood type, the maternal antibodies can then attack the foal's, the foal's um, blood cells after the foal is born. The first thing that a horse owner would look for when trying to determine if a foal has this disease is um, weakness, lethargy, depression, and decreased suckle response. Unfortunately, those can be symptoms of a lot of different diseases, so secondary symptoms that may occur that are maybe easier to look for are uh, tachycardia, tachinia, and pale or icteric mucosa, which you can see in this picture, the yellowish mucosa that could be a clinical sign of neonatal isourethrolysis. Um, if the onset is severe, seizures may occur due to cerebral hypoxia, which is lack of oxygen to the brain. Um, the diagnosis can be also a little difficult because these symptoms, once again, can be present for a lot of different diseases. But um, a vet would do laboratory blood testing, and if that, this disease were present, there would be a pack cell volume of less than 30% because the red blood cells are being destroyed, um, increased bilirubin in the blood, and the presence of a cult blood in the urine. It's one of those things where you kind of have to do a definitive, uh, definitive diagnosis, and the only way to do that is an antibody test where the mare's serum is cross-matched with the foal's uh, washed red blood cells added to an exogenous uh, complement. And if hemolysis of the foal's urethrocytes occurs, the test is positive. So if you've ever done an antibody test, it's kind of that same type of thing, or even a blood, uh, a blood type test on a human, it would be similar results. Sometimes a direct Combs test can be used, but those um, often have false negatives, so it's not the most reliable way. So as I mentioned before, the causes can be due to a uh, foal inheriting a blood type that is not compatible with its dam. If a dam is on her first pregnancy and it happens to be with a stallion who's in the foal ends up with a different blood type, the neonatal isourethrolysis probably won't occur because the mare hasn't been exposed to the blood type before because there's no blood transfer between the dam and foal during pregnancy, which I'll touch on later. Um, so, like I said, prior to giving birth, the mare's immune system must have been exposed to the full blood type from a previous encounter. Um, previous encounter could be from transplacental hemorrhaging from giving birth to other foals by the same stallion or a, just a stallion with a same incompatible blood type. And like I said, like, it's more common in multiparous mares because she, if she had a full with, yeah, if she had a full with um, the stallion that has an incompatible blood type, she would have been exposed before. And also blood transfusions with an incompatible blood type. Um, with, for the pathophysiology, the um, antibodies that the mare creates to give to the foal through colostrum um, concentrate during the last month of gestation. And because there's no um, blood transfer between the foal and mare during pregnancy, the foal only receives antibodies through colostrum. Um, there's a diagram on the side that I just added to kind of visualize this better. Um, a lot of other species have less layers between the blood of the dam and the blood of the embryo. And horses have several layers, which means the epithelial corial placental attachment, which means that the blood never directly touches. There are several, it's the top one up there. 
um, when the phalangist colostrum containing these alloy antibodies that the mare has made against its urethrocytes, it begins developing neonatal isobutyrethrolysis. Um, if you've ever taken an immunology class or microbiology class, you may know a little bit about how the antibodies will attach to the antigen, which in this case is the full urethrocytes, and it'll coat them, which eventually leads to lysis, either through the full immune complement system or the blood cells are engulfed through mononuclear phagocytes. Um, hemolysis is the result of this, and it, that can cause eventual anemia due to the lack of red blood cells and the subsequent signs. So the treatment is pretty low-key as far as, um, as, as long as the foal is not exposed for a long time or to a high amount of antibodies from the mare. So it really just depends. It's important to watch the symptoms. Um, and the convenient thing about this is that the foal's gut is close to colostrum after 24 hours. So if the neonatal isoerythrolysis is expected before this, the foal can be given nutrients via a nasogastric tube. And after the time where the foal's gut is closed, it's safe to nurse from the mare, so it's really only a 24-hour period. If the foal is still lethargic and just not nursing and not getting proper nutrients, you can maintain the foal in fluids to recover electrolyte balance. And uh, really, a blood transfusion is only necessary if the PCV becomes less than 12%. And death really only occurs if the foal is exposed to a lot of the antibodies because maybe the mare has had this problem several times before. Basically, this can be easily prevented as long as you know the blood type of the mare and the stallion before breeding. Um, there's kind of, it's not easy to find a lot of information about horse blood types, but if you see this picture on the side that gives the types, they're totally different than humans and other animals. So if anyone has a general understanding of the horse blood type, they should be good as far as making sure this doesn't happen. Um, you can also test the mare for antibodies against the foal's blood during the last month of gestation. And if you know the foal does have a non-compatible blood type, you can just feed an alternative source of colostrum in the first uh, 24 hours. There are my sources. Yeah, that's a good point. Just feed the mirror, or the, the foal colostrum from somebody else, not its own mm -hmm. It's pretty preventable if you know what to look for, which is good. Mm -hmm.